Good afternoon, Lace Jumpin' I'm John, this is Media True Dodger, and welcome back to Millennia for the grand finale of our playthrough as the glorious and magnificent Republic of John. And, uh, right, before we dive in, just a quick reminder, this is indeed a sponsored video, because this game is published by Paradox Interactive, and... Uh, if there's one thing Paradox enjoys doing, for some reason, it's driving round to many Truno headquarters and giving us money to play games we already liked and we're probably already going to play anyway. So, you know what? Win-win. Let's jump back in. Because yes, indeed, at the end of last episode, we had just won a glorious, spectacular victory against those bastards in Brazil, taking from them Fortaleza, Rio de Janeiro. In fact, thinking about it, hang on, we may need to uh, make some changes around here. And basically, yes, we welcomed into our empire a giant pile of new vassals who have immediately risen up against me because I, you know, kind of declared war on them and burned their towns down, etc., etc. So... Step one today, figure out how much of our new empire we can actually bloody salvage. Because uh, these two up here, they're just lost. There's nothing we can do about that. Some of this, however, yes, we can do a much better with. So, uh, okay, there is an army standing by in Rio de Janeiro right here. Who can basically go and deal with these bastards straight away. Oh yeah, you guys are in trouble, alright? Because I've got proper professional troops, though... Okay, you guys are actually, you know, a bit tougher than I was expecting. Okay, fine. Apparently, they just really, really cocking want it. And uh, they're also, right, getting bonus defense because rebels are apparently just strong, mighty troops. But, bare minimum, uh, there's no way in hell these guys are taking a city. And as for Brasilia, okay, terrible name. There we go. Not Brasilia. Much better. Okay, let's just, you know, reinforce them by sending them an explorer. Not actually, you know, a military unit, but it can still fight. We'll just, you know, hang out here and... Uh, do I really want to attack these guys? Probably not. I'd rather let them come to me because, yes, we do actually have uh, some militia in the town. Right. Keep an eye on that, though. Um, Just don't forget, by the way, it's not just the vassals up north. It's all the vassals, including Stoke-on-Trent, who I vassalized but never integrated. So, okay, just send a, a handful of troops over here to guard the towns like Ostia in this bit of the world. Marvellous. And uh, you guys, I need you to come down to Stoke-on-Trent. So if you could do that, right, you can't make it there right now unless I make you force march. So, right, now you get your movement points back, and now you're in town. Yeah, the garrisons together with uh, those troops it should be able to hold out. So, uh, okay. We're going to hold on to, you know, most of our own core empire. And on top of that, we should be able to hold on to, like, half the cities uh, we just gained. Like, hopefully, anyway. Oh, better and better. If you survive, Mr. Explorer, you're now right next to Mount Everest. So, right, so many years after Brazil cruelly denied your attempt to climb Mount Everest, we can finally give it a go. And yes, as we end the turn, I've got a bad feeling about, um, you know, our northern territories. I feel like we're not seeing them again. Oh, and Ladi flipping da, right. So those aren't just like, you know, burned down or anything. They've set up an evil inverted colour scheme, Republic of John. Right. Right, I'm going to send a handful of, uh, yeah, reinforcements to help out these guys. And maybe, just maybe, we can take some of this territory back. And down south, however, okay. The Stoke-on-Trent situation is looking uh, way more under control. I'll send in a small force to deal with them. I know, like, you know, they look weaker, but... These guys are, yeah, broken in terms of morale before the fight even begins. I feel like they're not standing up to us particularly well. Right, 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 right. Just a quick reintroduction to my empire here. So, welcome to the glorious Republic of John, made up of uh, London, which is our scientific and cultural heartland, Edinburgh, our ludicrous production centre, Manchester, a hotbed of raw resources that I suspect, yes, in the coming ages are going to be very, very useful indeed. Liverpool, a port city that's potentially going to lead the charge in our expansion overseas. And Milton Keynes, which is also here for some reason. It's just like the real United Kingdom. So, okay, here's what I'm thinking about today as my first priority. Up to now, we've been like, you know, overwhelmingly focused on the area immediately around us and... Uh, 
I think it's time to start thinking a bit bigger. Which is precisely why I've started work on navigation. It's time to see what's going on overseas, because uh, there might be some, you know, uh, lovely islands where we can slap down some colonies uh, before anybody else gets there. Right, Edinburgh, you upgrade your, yes, basic docks into proper harbours and whatnot. And then get ready to, yes, produce our very first big old boats. I love it. Still on the downside, right. One, we're not ready for the Age of Alchemy. We've missed that one. Did not have the right social insights. But, okay. Age of Enlightenment, 12 turns away. Turns out America is already moving in that direction. Well, that's just not okay. I'm not being second place to America. Burial mounds that mean culture. Culture means culture powers. Culture powers mean Eurekas. Right, we can catch up to America. They're not beating me. Also, it turns out that um, yes, our nation was at the very south of the map because that would appear to be Antarctica right next to us. So, right, we can't go further south, but that suggests yes, there might be something hidden somewhere over here. And speaking of exploring, right, let's do our first proper expedition. These are kind of fun. So, yeah, like, you know, at the start of the game, you discover a natural landmark, but until you're a bit more advanced, you can't really do much to it. But now we've got explorers. Right, buddy. Step one, you're going to survey the highest peak. So, you know, you just get a tiny choose your own adventure novel to decide how this expedition's going to turn out, which I find delightful. Either you take it nice and easy, in which case the expedition might not turn out well, you might not actually successfully climb the mountain, but you'll get some good XP out of it. Or you spend currency, but yes, then there's a much better chance you're going to successfully do something amazing. So I'm just swimming in engineering XP right now. Sure, we're going to design special mountain climbing gear. Okay, with that done, yes, the chance of my final expedition succeeding is now up to 70%. So... There's now a fierce blizzard, uh, so I can pray for art XP, pay some exploration XP, bonus 10% to success chance, or I could just brave it. So, uh, you know, there's a good chance it'll go really well, uh, but it might also be a disaster. I'm going to pay the exploration XP, so right, we're up to 80% chance of success. Oh, it is interesting, we have actually made it to the summit. The problem is that doesn't mean, you know, I'm going to survive the trip back down. So, right. Bit of engineering to map a proper path, which sounds like the responsible thing to do. Up to 90% success chance. Okay, and here we go. We have made it to the top of Everest. We're on the way back down. I've been very responsible. So, we've now got a 90% success chance. Just roll the dice and... Success. Marvellous, meaning, uh, yep, we get ourselves our culture power immediately. Activate Eureka, meaning, uh, oh yeah, oh flipping yeah, screw you United States of America. You can't overtake the Republic of John, not okay. Oh, and here's exciting. Right, I think Brazil have accepted they are no longer a significant player on this continent because uh, they don't even want to skirmish anymore. They want to start normalising relations, so... Uh, I'll take it. Alright, I don't want to have to finish these guys off down the line. I am happy to make friends at this point. Alright, all this war has generated a lot of chaos as we just saw. I'd rather, you know, calm down, have a bit of peace, damn it. Okay, obviously, when I say like, you know, no more war, barbarians don't count. Especially when it's hilarious barbarian situations uh, like me firing cannons uh, at a canoe. That's acceptable because it's hilarious. And obviously, evil alternative universe Republic of John doesn't count either. Like, they're not really people. They're just evil monsters from an alternative dimension. So putting them down, that's, you know, just for the good of the wider worlds. Oh, and the game has rewarded me for my enlightened attitude towards barbarian canoes and whatnot because... Here we go. The Age of Enlightenment. Right. So all of a sudden, public libraries, specialization, secularism, and new technologies, new national spirits. Right. Get the feeling that, you know, this age might be all about getting the science rolling. Oh, yeah. Here we go. A brand new improvements, public schools. So, 
and society gets bigger, sooner or later, it's going to be needing education as its next need. Which is going to be very important because, right, as we build advanced buildings that generate specialists, basically a new type of advanced improvement point, that's going to create a need for more education. So, right, society's going to demand more and more education as I go through this age. Gotcha. And if I don't do it, then... Okay. The age of ignorance could kick off. And if tabbyism spreads far enough, age of harmony, that's a victory age. We could straight up win. But honestly, tabbyism is, you know, not that strong at the moment. So instead... Okay. The game kind of wants to take me by default into the age of revolution. But, um, can't help but notice... If I just build some balloons, then I get to go into an alternative steampunk age instead. And on top of that, right. First, a pick of the new national spirits. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, would you believe the scholars are all about knowledge, which does strike me as a good idea, though... Uh, right, you're gaining bonus knowledge for every friend. We're already friends with the Ottomans. I mean, we could convert the Brazilians into friends, because it's either that or we shoot them. So, okay, that's tempting. Oh, but hang on, they're not the only science spirit in town. There's also inventors. Also about knowledge, but to be honest, mainly about innovation. The Lucky Dip secret science tree that produces all sorts of weird extra stuff, and... Uh, okay, that's going to be hard to beat. Oh yeah, nothing could compare to that. So right, for the third bloody time in a row, we're going into the engineering focus. So, straight away, just give me a giant pile of a knowledge, innovation, and yes, my new specialists. And then let me use those uh, to build an inventor's laboratory. Together with uh, just uh, more and more innovation as time goes by. Generating inventions uh, that are consumed for even more knowledge. Oh yeah, I think we'll be having one of them immediately, thank you. And at the same time, right, we're making good progress here. My explorer going in a one direction has found Egypt. India, as it turns out, is, yeah, way to the north of us. I should have expected that, I suppose. And I strongly suspect that that over there might just be the Ottomans. Oh, and speaking of more people, oh, right, there they are. There are the cocky bastard Americans. And as expected, right, there are the Ottomans. So, okay, they're literally right next to India. That's why these guys keep attacking each other. Oh, and you know what? If I want to give myself, you know, a real bloody boost, Fortaleza. After all these bloody years, and with, you know, a little bit of help from my diplomacy powers, you guys are almost ready to integrate. Lovely. Although I can't deny it is rather hilarious that, um, yes, our special magical laboratory, where we appear to have recruited vampire Nikola Tesla to invent incredible science stuff for us, that only actually generates one knowledge a turn. If, however, I put down this brand new coffee house, converting tea or coffee into analytics, that's worth two knowledge, so basically, yes, just caffeinating regular people makes them smarter than vampire Nikola Tesla. I love it. And you know what? London does actually have a tiny bit of coffee, so go on then. Why not? Marvellous. And Milton Keynes has tea. So tea gets converted into a coffee house, but we serve tea in it, not coffee, because there is no coffee. So okay. This is actually one of the best sources of knowledge we've now got in the entire empire, meaning... Okay. Like, as we don't have any more tea, if somebody else, you know, overseas were to have tea, then it would probably be a good idea if I was going to... Okay, you knew it was going to end this way. I'm British. I'm sorry. It's hard-coded into my DNA. And don't forget, Fortaleza. Right now, my science is about at 43 that integrate you with your libraries and medieval universities and whatnot, and up to 46 odds. Good, 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 good. And okay, you guys are sitting on, yes, a lot of iron, copper, etc, etc. This could be, you know, like Manchester, a damn good industrial centre. So, begin converting materials into ingots. 
And then we can start converting, yes, those ingots into tools, and ultimately, those tools into machines. So, right, if we need to, like, you know, get a joint number of improvement points, we can do it that way. Though, honestly, for now, I'd rather just take the production. Here we go, I finally found one. An island not too far from Liverpool, where they're growing tea. So, right, we can get more tea from there, and even better, no one's living on it right now, apart from barbarians, who don't count because, okay, now I'm saying this out loud, it does sound bad, yes. Okay, I am not going to land my troops on this island and immediately murder everyone. Okay, that would be wrong. Instead, I'm going to bribe them. Okay, but we're not going to use the term bribe, all right? We're going to offer them a, a fair amount of money that they're going to use and live somewhere where there's not tea, where they'll be happier, and I'll have tea. So everybody wins. Oh, and have I got some good news for the Republic of John, which is, yes, we've just been trading a large number of balloons. Delightfully, balloons, yes, have the ability to be deployed. So if you put them up into the sky, you can just see further. So yes, using this, you know, somewhat aggressive, rude castle I've built right on Brazil's borders, I can now see, you know, well into their territory, which is lovely. And with those built, no revolutions for us. Instead, giant steampunk airships. Oh, and bloody hell, right. One slight issue here. While my society, you know, flourishes into a golden age of steampunk science, powered largely by tea. Don't ask where we got the tea from, we really don't want to talk about it. America is once again trying to drag us into a different age. Because they want to drag the entire cocking world into the age of ignorance. And right now, they're winning. Okay. Change of plans, America. Number one, we're going to activate, yes, our Eureka, which is going to get us, okay, back in the lead, but only just. We need way more science to make sure America doesn't succeed in dragging the world down into nothing. So, right, London, I need you to focus everything on science for the time being, okay? That's going to get you an extra nine knowledge. That is not bad. Just to focus everything we can on on knowledge. We can't let America drag us down. And please tell me we won game. Please let it be me, not America. And... Okay, it's fine. You're all welcome. I've saved you from America's age of ignorance. You're welcome. So apparently the big thing we're walking into now is right. There's going to be ether on mountains. Use that to generate power and then use the power to build a gigantic blimp air force. Oh, well, that does sound delightful. Okay, I always said Manchester was going to be, you know, at the forefront of our industrialization. I was not expecting it to be because of a giant number of magical mountains, but, um, okay. There we go. Magical floating ether harvesting of some description. And that powers modern buildings. So the ether is going to keep us going until, yes, coming into future eras, we could build, like, you know, more traditional power plants or whatever. But, um, okay, for the time being, I don't even know or care what it does, but I was about to say, obviously, we're doing mad science. But there is also robots next door. Okay, literally convert ether into raw resources, or just, you know, way more efficiently gather what I've got. So, right, that's sexy, I'll give ya. Whereas mad science, right, converts ether straight into knowledge. Okay, we've got to start there because, yeah, we need to keep science rocking along before America drags us into another one of their terrible eras. And to build all these buildings, we're going to be needing, yes, less improvement points and more specialists. Meaning, right, advanced education buildings, which are going to, you know, increase the need for education. Meaning, we're going to need more schools, so, right... And see what we're doing here. We need to, you know, keep things turning towards a more and more educated workforce. And if we just rush our culture power, one more thing as well, which is, right, towns. We can now have a third town per sitting. And I think I know where this one needs to go, which is, uh, yeah. We need to start expanding over in this direction. Simply because London desperately needs to expand. And right now, there's nowhere else for it to grow. 
Fortunately, yes, we can just create new land. Because right now, this forest, well, we can't really do much with it, aside from uh, gather trees. But if we want to, like, you know, uh, have some proper fresh ground, uh, here we go. Uh, using my engineering abilities, uh, congratulations, uh, that's now empty land we can do anything with. Much better. Like, here we go. London's literally just sitting on a worthless iron ore right now. Well, not anymore. Instead, yet more ingots, yet more production. Okay. We expand over here. London is going to be ridiculously strong once it gets going. Oh, and speaking of power, right. Power, would you believe, happens to work rather nicely alongside inventors. So, right. If I take electricity then I can actually make my laboratories be twice as good. But they will need more power to function. So London has got power for now, and Manchester's golden too, because yes, they're already harvesting the ether, but we may need to start, yes, shipping ether from Manchester elsewhere. Start sending, yes, ether off to, you know, Edinburgh, Milton Keynes, something like that. And then, yeah, once we're done with that, we're going to need to go back in time a bit to upgrade my warehouses. Because, yes, until I do that, Manchester can only export so much. Okay, but here's where things get sexy. Because now over in Manchester, immediately, we can start converting ether straight into knowledge. And you know what? How about, you know, us being inventors and whatnot... I feel like, having brought us into the glorious age of ether, we should invite everyone to come and have a look see at all this ether stuff we're inventing. Oh yeah. Oh flippin' yeah. World Fair Improvement, let's go. So okay, this here building converts, yes, one invention or research into an exhibition representing three knowledge, one culture, and 25 wealth. I love it. And okay, this here is where things are going to start getting silly when it comes to power usage. So, uh, communication, I could generate culture, but I need power. Or, I could generate knowledge, but I need power. Or, I can upgrade all my old printing presses to, yes, generate even more knowledge. But I need power. Okay, make more power. Got it. Oh, and here's an unexpected bit of good news. France is dead, right? I'm pretty sure I saw that they were at war with the USA quite a lot. So, right, I think the US has just killed France. And better and better, we can move forward into the age of rocketry. And uh, I think we should. Because based on that picture, basically, dibs on the moon. So, okay, we're back to choices here. So, age of information is the default coming up next. There's also uh, age of ecology... If I focus a lot of attention on, yes, uh, filling up the uh, social fabric tracks. Alternatively, discover we're not alone. Right, there may be downsides to going to the moon, but that's not going to stop me, damn it. Oh, and here we cocking go. The last national spirit. And I won't deny going straight for space agency to, you know, just to make it a sure thing. That's tempting. Though Silicon Valley does make you, yes, apparently able to produce your own video games, which is delightful. No. I'm sorry. It can't be anything but Space Agency. Let's cock it go to space. And speaking of which, right, time for a peaceful revolution. So, communism, democracy, or fundamentalism? Okay, so fundamentalism is obviously if yes, you're looking to get some sort of a religious victory. Because you need nations around the world to be following your religion. Gotcha. Meanwhile, communism seems to be based more around, you know, base needs. Food, housing, etc, etc. Whereas democracy is heavily based around knowledge. So, right. I would say, yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, rocketry is done. Here we cocky go. Right, the space race is a proper complicated thing. Gotcha. Oh, and hilariously, it's not just like, you know, a timer or an amount of production or anything. I literally have to take a chance and launch. But, um, if I don't do my homework, you know, it might just explode or something. So, right. Fascinating. 
So either we go for launch straight away, which is going to cost me, yeah, 300 gold uh, and might just explode. Uh, or if I toss in, you know, some extra specialists and also get the military involved for some reason. Uh, yeah, it's going to cost me more, but it's also going to be way more likely to succeed. So, uh, you know what? Screw it. This first one seems nice and simple. Let's go for launch and uh, holy flip me, there's a tiny countdown. Well, I just love that, and bare minimum, it's not exploded. Good, 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 good. I suspect they're not all going to be that simple. Right, on this occasion, engineering, and uh, hire some staff to help with, you know, the space program, and uh, right, I see. You can also, like, you know, accept a lower chance of success, but there's a chance of getting, you know, a good amount of uh, exploration XP. Speaking of which, hang about. Hang about, hang about, hang about. I've got a... Oh, bloody hell, we're just shy. Just bloody shy. Well, you know what? Honestly, this is pretty cheap, all things considered. I'm willing to give a go to going straight on to the next launch. So, you know what? This is such a more fun system than just, you know, queuing up a high production project. So, uh, all right. Countdown begins and... Please don't explode. Okay, it slightly exploded. But next time, we'll have, you know, invested in our space agency. So we won't explode again, will we? Okay, we finished mopping up the corpses. So, time for another go. I don't have the right technology to, yes, put engineering in on this occasion. But, my base chance is going up. Every explosion brings us closer to the moon. So, right, just hire more staff once again. I mean, it's still 75%. That's not bad. That probably won't explode. It's probably going to be fine. There we go. Much better. Well done, guys. 60% base chance. Pretty good already. Do like, you know, a proper testing. Bother plugging in the trajectories for the engines or whatever. And because, like, you know, we're now 120%, I can help myself to, yes, a bit of bonus XP and still I have it be guaranteed. So, uh, right, out into space we go. One last step and yeah, I built some more space centers so uh, the base chance is already looking good. So we can get that straight away with, uh, yeah, some testing and some slingshot summing or another uh, to 95%. And we could if we wanted to, like, you know, uh, ooh, photograph the far side of the moon. But okay, how about we don't do that? Because if they explode, because I was doing like, you know, an unnecessary arty thing, people will object. And, uh, oh yeah, basically, screw the rest of the world. Uh, I've already been to the cocking moon, unless I like explode. But like, it's a 5% chance I'm not going to explode. You see, I didn't explode. And even better, we now own the moon. Okay, we are in theory... Ready to move on. But I don't really want to move on to the Age of Information. No, 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 no. The Age of Ecology sounds lovely. But to get there, I need to boost every single one of these to 5 out of 10. Now, we're not too far off, really. So, okay. Here's how we're going to do this. Because, in all fairness, every single one of these has a good bonus attached to it. Like, you know, boosting them is a good idea anyway. One, when my power meter fills up completely, I can spend it all to increase those by a single point. Engineering will be full up in no time. So that one, that one's A-OK. -okay. And then, yes, there's a culture power that gives me one point I can spend. I think if I rush culture a few times and just save up my currencies, I could do it, assuming... America doesn't toss us into the age of death and destruction or something. Then just toss, yeah, every building either at something that produces XP or something that produces culture. Then just keep rushing culture. We are swimming in money. Take social doctrine. And okay, we're moving in the right bloody direction here. Prioritize, yeah, anything that's like uh, 3 out of 10. Warfare hits 400. So okay, there's another one. And government hits 400 XP. Okay, step by step here, step by step. I'm going to be honest, I don't know where this point came from. 
But I'm glad it's here because, yes, that gets you up to there. Spend some money to get you as well. So, right, at that point, okay, who's, who's the best candidate to increase? Exploration is going in the right direction. But I'd rather not spend those points if I could spend them on space agency, if at all possible. Right, put time, um, yes, military, up to 5 out of 10. We're getting there, damn it, we're getting there. In fact, yeah, according to my calculations, uh, diplomacy will be done in like uh, four or five turns. Uh, by which point, we can use the coach power to get inside to five out of ten. So I do not need uh, to be saving up exploration, in which case, great. My National Aerospace Research Facility can start generating innovation. Good, 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 good. Okay, here we cock and go. Diplomacy, that goes up to five. Rush, culture, power, use social doctrine. And now, if we've got this right, age of ecology. I'm going to be honest, I'm really just curious what the age of ecology looks like in a game that, as far as I can tell, doesn't actually keep an eye on pollution. And also, mostly I power my empire using magic mountains. I'm not sure that producers like smoke or anything. Okay, we're terraforming and building like, you know, just super awesome looking future cities. And even more importantly, it's now time to pick a victory. Or alternatively, fail to pick a victory condition and fall into, you know, the ultimate crisis that's going to kill everybody. Okay, so, the Archangels... Doom satellites that blow up everyone that's not me. Seems not cool, to be honest. I've been getting on well with everybody. The Age of Transcendence, if I, like, you know, completely fill up the social tracks and whatnot. You know what? Let's do a classic Civ finale. Everyone on the spaceship, we're going to a different galaxy or something. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. Terraforming does sound quite sexy. Like, you know, just create islands, make scrubland into much more useful, productive grassland, flatter cooking mountains uh, so we can build stuff on top of them. So, okay, when it's talking about, yes, eco cities, it means my towns that I can give specializations to in order to, you know, uh, suit where they are. So, up to now, if they've been nearby farms, a uh, farming town, etc., etc. But, right, now. Every eco-city generates culture for adjacent grasslands. And there's grassland everywhere, meaning if I just move you over, cock me, that's a lot of culture. And what's even better is a poor old Edinburgh that's always struggled with, you know, not having enough territory due to being squeezed in between uh, London and Milton Keynes. Uh, well, now it's got more, though I'm so sorry to, like, you know, the people who work in this dock. I've kind of just screwed over your livelihood there. I want you to know, my commitment to being the good guy at the end of this run is that I have literally just researched peace and love. Okay, with our signs firing on all cylinders, we have blitzed through this age. And I'd say we're in a dominating position right now. No one else has even entered the age of ecology. And that means, right, it's time to cocky go. Okay, just remember, if anybody asks... We're not abandoning the planet, okay? We're just going back to the moon to pick up something we left there. We'll be right back. Okay, at 250 of production, London is now comfortably our most high production city. And that's what this entire project is about. So, just to take a bit of a forest down to the way and... Uh, oh yeah. Build this right next to our world fair. Now that, that'll do. But okay, this is the big one. This project lets me turn London's production into spaceship build progress. So, okay, the entire empire now needs to basically function to shove production into London. And I know precisely how they're going to do it. It's finally time for Manchester to start pulling its weights. Because so far, I've just been, you know, moving power around, etc, etc, but no... No, 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 no. Manchester is sitting on giant piles of steel. Every steel is worth a six production. So what if we just exported all of that steel straight to London? Now London has got an extra 18 production. And now we just do the same with every valuable raw resource being produced everywhere in the empire. It is all going to be shipped straight to London. And on top of that, right, screw steel. We can start turning that steel 
into titanium, worth even more production. Okay, and aside from, yes, yeah, supporting London with goods, other territories can also convert their remaining production into colony ship progress too, so right. Once we're done with anything that could boost production, that's what we should do. Oh, here she comes, right, titanium. Oh, and not just titanium either. Right, once we've made the titanium, we could convert that into plasteel. Whatever that is precisely. But I feel like, yes, the real power might just be... Okay, there's a repeatable tech that generates colony ship progress. So, okay, London right now is sitting on 18 steel. All right, start converting that into titanium. Beautiful. And there's even three slots in it, so right, we're straight up to 12 titanium, though we could do even cocking more. If only we had a way of generating more land. Oh, it looks like we do actually, marvellous. Right, so we've now got ourselves 18 titanium, I believe. So yes, now we can convert 6 titanium into 6 plasteel. Okay, I think London is now as good as it possibly can be. We have literally bought tiles out to sea and then immediately filled them in with sand in order to build more industry. And even then, we're generating about, yes, maybe 150 odd points a turn. So we're going to build this thing and we're going to win. It's just going to take a while. Honestly, I feel like we should just go and live on the moon. The moon was cooking easy. We just tossed some money at it and went there. And here we go. 20 turns later, the ship is almost done and even better than that. Not a single other nation is in the Age of Departure yet. Most of them are still in the Age of Ecology, meaning... Okay, there's a very good chance they don't even know that I'm about to leave, okay? They've not even discovered the possibility of naffing off and leaving the planet behind. You know what? When Brazil comes to investigate, I'll make sure I've left them a note in the ruins of London. So, basically, it's been fun, but bye everyone. And there we cocky go. Victory for me. The time has come to leave our planet behind, though. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, like, you know, that drawing there may be a bit optimistic. Like, yes, we did just build a, a gigantic spaceship in order to leave, but, um, we definitely didn't have flying cars. Like, you know, mostly we're still using balloons, I think. Oh, and you know what? That's bloody nice. So, uh, right. When the game completes, you can choose to, at that point, go back into the map, but with all fog of war turned off. So, at long last, I can see everything because, yeah, up to this point, there were still large parts of, you know, the other continent in particular, I never got to see. And by the looks of it, yes, possibly Brazil was engaged in a huge war against India or the Ottomans. I'm not 100% sure, but they certainly had a lot of troops around here. Sorry, when I say a lot of troops, it turns out, um, yes, that's not really um, much next to injure and the Ottomans. Right, those guys were really cocky going at it for the entire game. Gotcha. Oh, and shocking revelations from the other continent, because, yes, you may recall, France was definitely killed by America. But, um, America do not possess that territory now. Instead, uh, yes, large parts of it are on fire. And it all belongs to Persia, who are continuing to advance further and further south. So, all right, apparently, yes, the reason America fell behind a bit at the end was because they were having their asses handed to them by the Persian forces. So, yes, indeed, as we just step a moment back in time to the second before our glorious launch, that there, ladies and gentlemen, is millennia and... Uh, there is a lot I like here. This is a really, really bloody interesting game. I love the goods production system that makes cities so much more interesting and complicated. And I love all the culture and domain powers that means at any given moment you've got so many tools at your disposal to achieve your goals. But most of all, more than anything, I love the fact that even though you've just seen a full game from start to finish, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface here. Like, there's so many different ways uh, this game can play out, depending on the choices you make. Like, say, for example, every single national spirit and government you take. And maybe the single best piece of all 
is the ages, meaning every time you play the game, literally the course of history is going to change. Like, we had the age of ecology and the steampunk age of ether, and on top of that, there might be all sorts of alternative weird ways history can go. Like the crisis ages. We didn't even see one of those, but... Okay, this is... This is really rather something special. So that there is the end of our millennia playthrough for now, but I would be amazed if we don't see this again at some point, because if this is how good it is now, I cannot wait to see what it becomes over time. So yes, indeed, I am sure millennia will be back in some form at some point. And if you want to check it out yourself, it comes out the beginning of next week. I got my hands on it just a bit early, thanks to Paradox. So yes, indeed, worth a look I'd say, and we may well see it again in future. Hopefully, you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerds. And this has been the delightful Millennia. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> Oh, he likes that! <laughs> the Romans touched me! <laughs>